Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how to have multiple people sign the same document in Verifile. It's really easy to do, so let's jump right in and I'll show you how it works. So this is my Verifile home screen. You can see I have the Contacts tab selected here, and you can see all of my contacts. In order to have two people sign the same document, you'll need to use workspace threads. The reason for that is that the private message threads, the threads that appear when you click someone's name, can only have one other person in them. So if you want to get a signature from one person, private message threads are fine. But if you need to get signatures from more than one person, you need to use workspace threads. So I'm going to click the workspace tab, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new workspace by clicking the plus sign next to workspaces. I'm going to call this workspace Client Signed Documents. Click OK. And now you can see the workspace here listed at the top of my workspace list. Now I'm going to open that workspace by clicking it once. Currently I don't have any guests and I don't have any workspace threads inside this workspace. I'm going to start by adding a couple guests to this workspace. Specifically, I'm going to add the two people who I know need to sign the same document. So I'm going to click the plus sign next to guests. And the two people I need to have sign this document are Dean and Sam. Now I can click Add To, and these two guests will be added to the workspace. You can see them here, Dean and Sam. Now you should note that I can click either of their names, and when I do, it opens the private message thread, the one-on-one -on -one message thread, with the person whose name I clicked. That's pretty convenient. So if while I'm working in this workspace thread, I need to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with either Sam or Dean, I could just click their name and type them a message here. But I need them both to be in the same thread. And for that, I'll need to create a workspace thread. So I'm going to click the plus sign next to workspace threads. And I'm going to call this workspace thread Client Contract 2022. Now I'll click OK. You can see the Client Contract 2022 workspace thread is now listed under my list of workspace threads. But please note here, this green badge says Private. No guests have access yet. So even though I have these two guests up here in the workspace, neither of them have access to this thread until I give them permission to view it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. The way you give a guest permission to view one of your workspace threads is you click the gear icon that appears when you hover your mouse over the workspace thread name, and then you click Manage Permissions. Now you can see I have the ability to toggle who has access to this workspace thread. So I need them both to have access, so I'll toggle them both. I could have also just chosen Select All and click Save. Now you can see these little colored tiles tell you that both Dean and Sam have access to the workspace thread called Client Contract 2022. You can also look up here, and you can see Dean's name and Sam's name here under the workspace thread name. Incidentally, if I click one of their names, I can always look and see the last time they viewed this workspace thread. Currently, you can see it says not yet viewed because Dean has never looked at this thread. But if he had seen it, it would show me the date and time that he last looked at this thread. So now I need to add a document for Dean and Sam to sign. I'm going to type them a little message as well. Please sign this document. Now I'm going to use the paperclip to attach the document that I want both of them to sign. So I'll click the paperclip. This is the document I need both of them to sign, Client Contract 2022. So I'm going to add it to the thread. You'll see here that there's a Request Signing box. Now if I were to click Send without checking that box, both of these guests would have access to that document, but it would not request signatures from them. So I need to check this box before clicking Send. So I'll check it. You'll see it turns green. I click Send. Now I need to choose, of my guests, who needs to sign this document. 
So I want them both to sign. So I'm going to click Dean and Sam. Notice these numbers. Those numbers represent the order in which the signature requests will go out. In Verifile, the order in which guests sign a document is actually pretty important. So if you want Sam to sign first, you need to uncheck Dean. Sam now becomes first. And check Dean second. And you can see Dean changes to a two. So you can use these little toggles to decide the order in which you want your guests to sign this document. So I'm going to go ahead and have Dean sign first and Sam second. Then I'll click Next. Now I'm being asked about a few details here related to the signature request. First, it's asking me for Dean, does this signer need to agree to terms? I'm going to leave this checked as yes. I do want Dean to agree to terms. The default terms are, I agree to do business electronically, but you can change it to anything you want. You're also being asked if you want to use SMS identity verification. So if you were to click yes, you'd be able to enter Dean's phone number here. And what would happen is when Dean goes in to sign this document, he would receive a text message with a code. And he would be required to enter that code before he'd be allowed to sign the document. It's just a second way of verifying the identity of Dean before allowing him to sign. For the purpose of this demo, I'm going to choose no. I don't need to identify Dean using a code. Now I click Next, and you can see it shifts to Sam Signer, and I'm being asked the same things. Yes, I want the signer to agree to the terms. So I leave them as I agree to do business electronically. I could change them if I wanted. And I'm going to leave this as no, don't send a signature code. Now I click Finish. Now I'm going to be setting the document up for Sam and Dean to sign. So right now you can see Dean here. I'm setting Dean's signatures up first. So let's see, where do I want Dean to sign? It says Dean initials. So I need Dean's initials here. So I'm going to put a box there. Check initials. And I scroll down here. Dean is contractor number two. So I'm going to ask for his signature here. And I also need the date. And that's all I need for Dean to do on this particular document. One thing to notice is that the colors of Dean's tile match the color of his signature boxes. You'll see why that's important in a minute. So now I'll click Next Signer. And you can see now we're setting the document up for Sam to sign. I'm going to scroll back up. Note the little flag here indicating that Dean's initials have been requested here. That tells me exactly what I've already done. But now I need to do Sam. So I'm going to go ahead and put a box for Sam to be able to add his initials. And I need Sam to sign. He's contractor one, so I'm going to go ahead and request his signature here. And by the way, you'll probably have already noticed this. But anytime I need a date or initials, or if I want to create a custom field, I just click this little arrow and then choose from the list. So just to review, I've requested his initials here, and I've requested his signature and the date here. And that's all I need for Sam to do with this document. So now I'm going to click Finish Request. At this point, I can either review the request, so go back and make sure I got everything right, or I can submit the request. When I click Submit, the first person who needs to sign the document will be notified that I have requested their signature. If I click Review, I could go back and change the order, I could add more signature fields, I could basically do anything I need to do to finish setting up the document. But I've set it up correctly, so I'm going to click Submit Request. You can see we give you some feedback there. 
Now you'll notice it says Dean has been notified and Sam will sign after Dean. So we don't want to notify both of them that it's their turn to sign when really it's only Dean's turn. So Dean will receive an email letting him know that his signature has been requested and there will be a link in that email that he can click to take him straight into the signing process. But we're going to go ahead and just take a look at Dean's Verifile account so that we can see what it looks like from Dean's perspective. Okay, now I'm looking at Dean's account. You can see Dean's name up here in the upper right hand corner. And you can see at the top here, there's a workspace listed, hosted by me, Dave Martin, called Client Signed Documents. And there's a little blue dot indicating that there's something new in there for Dean to do. So I'm Dean. I'm going to go ahead and open this workspace by clicking it once. And you can see he's taken straight into the thread where his signature has been requested. It says, your signature is requested. Below it says, Sam will sign after you. So we're letting Dean know that both he and Sam need to sign this document. So I'm Dean. I'm going to click review and sign to sign this document. Here are the terms that Dave has requested that I agree to before I can sign. This is where if I had used the SMS verification when I set this document up for Dean's signature, Dean would be required to enter a code that he would have received over a text message. But we didn't use that feature, so all Dean needs to do is agree to terms. The terms are I agree to do business electronically. So I'm Dean, so I say yes, that sounds great to me. I click yes. Now Dean gets to decide what his signature should say. And there's lots of options. He can just confirm if he thinks this looks good, or he can edit his signature. When he edits his signature, he can either type it and choose a different font. There are several to choose from. Or he can choose to draw his own. So I'm going to go ahead and try to draw my own here. Not great. Not even good. But it's unique. So we'll keep that as Dean's signature. And for his initials, I'll just leave it as it was so I don't have to try and draw one again. Now I click Save. Now all Dean has to do to sign this document is click Confirm, and his initials will be applied. Click Confirm here, and his signature is applied. And then click Confirm to finish with the date. Now the document has been signed by Dean. As you can see, it says so in the thread. You, Dean, have signed. Sam has now been notified. So now it's Sam's turn to sign the document. So now I want to show you what it looks like from Sam's perspective. OK, now we're looking at Sam's Verifile account. And you can see Sam has access to the same workspace, Client Signed Documents. And there's a little blue dot next to it, letting him know that there's something new inside that workspace for him to see. Sam will have also now received an email with a link to take him straight in to sign this document. But if he just logged in, this is what he would see first. So he can click Client Sign Documents to open that workspace. And now you can see, it tells him, Dean has signed. Your signature is requested. And Sam now has the Review and Sign button. So when Sam clicks that button, once again, he's being asked to agree to terms. Sam does agree. So he's going to go ahead and click Yes. Sam might choose a different font. He's not going to even attempt to draw his own signature. And then he clicks Save. Now all Sam has to do is click Confirm to add his initials. Click Confirm again to add his signature. And then click Confirm a final time to add the date. Now you can see in the thread, letting Sam know, Dean has signed, and you, Sam, have also signed. 
So now I'd like to show you what it looks like from the point of view of the person who requested those signatures. So we're going to switch back to Dave's My Account. So now I'm back in Dave's account, My Account. And I can see in this workspace thread called Client Contract 2022 that the contract has now been signed by Dean and by Sam. And if I click the contract name, I'm given a few options here. First, I want to preview it just to see what the document looks like now that they've signed. So I'll click Preview. I can see their initials here. I can see they've both signed and they've both added the date. So that looks great to me. From here, I could actually print it if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to close this window. But one other important note is the View Signing Info link. This link will take me to all of the information that I need to record as a person who requested those signatures from Dean and Sam. So I'm going to go ahead and click that link. You can see there's a lot of information here. Document ID, sign ID, my name because I requested the signature, my email address, the signer's names, there are two of them here. We also include the IP address for each signer, which you need to have as required by the IRS. And now I can either click close or I can choose to print this report if I want to save a copy for myself. I'm going to click close. That information will always be attached to this signed document. Anytime you need it, you can just click view signing info and print it if you need to. So that's how you get two different people to sign the same document in Verifile. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video, and I hope that you find this feature extremely easy to use.